Now we have a presentation by two lecturers from, from UPV, from this, from this faculty, Vicente and, and Germán. They are experts in electronics, so please go from That's a bit too much. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Okay, so nice to meet you. We are Vicente and Germán, and we work in the electronics department here in the UPV. I work as an analog designer, so I, I design microchips for different applications. And we are going to introduce you a little bit to this, to this world, to this business. Okay? So we are going to talk about microelectronics in general, the actors in the microelectronics scene, and what can you find in the world related to, to microelectronics. So, well, I'd like you to realize that the microelectronics and semiconductor business is a very big business. So we are talking about the same amount of money that we have more or less in all the pharmaceutical companies in the world. So we have more or less the same amount of money in the semiconductors industry, talking only about what we call fabless, fabless companies. Fabless companies means that they don't build anything. They just design things. So they build the designs to other people, and these people manufacture and create the chips. Okay? So only the designers move more or less the same money uh, as the pharmaceutical companies. And this, this, uh, this industry, is, well, this, this table is a little bit old, so it's not very updated. It's difficult to find these numbers, so this, these numbers are from uh, 2018, more or less the, the, the Number one and two are always the same, Intel, Samsung, AMD, all these people is all around the first places of the, of the table. And then we have a lot of companies, uh, <coughs> big companies, really big companies that move more or less about half, half the amount of money of the table from the half down, more or less half the amount of money, and all the other half is concentrated in three or four big companies. Okay. So I mean that this is very, it's a very important industry. You know that it is everywhere, but sometimes we don't realize how much money is there, how much people is there working, and a very different uh, aspect from this this uh, industry is that uh, it's located all around the world. So we don't have uh, all the business located in very few countries. This is uh, all around the world. Okay, so if you want to build a chip, you don't build a chip in Asia and you take the chip and use it. No, this is distributed all around the world because building a chip is very complicated. So you have to build it, you have to design it, you have to build it, you have to test it, you have to put it inside a package, you have to design an electronic apl uh, application, and every everything is done in different countries. So it's a very global business. Okay, so here is an example. Typical example, some mistakes here with the, with the names of the country, but it's the same. Just take a look at what, where is the movement. Okay, First of all, we have very big companies dedicated to design things here in, in Europe and, and North America. So we start, for example, creating the main building blocks here in Europe and America. Also, we design the, uh, the inside of the chip in these places. But once we start uh, with the test devices, once we start to think about manufacturing, we have to move to Asia. Here in Asia, we have the very big foundries. The foundries are the, the places where you build the chip, okay? the silicon foundries. And also here we can have find uh, places where they test the chips, they put them in the packages, they start to uh, certify all the procedure and then we come back here again to the uh, United States or Europe and uh, we design the things and in the end we get the product. So you move all around the world to create a real electronic application. Okay? And this is a very global business and this is good and also is bad. I mean, you have several drawbacks here because when you have some problem in some point of the chain, uh, you cut the chain, you cut the whole chain. So this is good because everybody is involved in, in this business and everybody wants to create things. But on the other hand, you have if you have some problem, you can stop all the all the all the process. 
and that's a, a very dangerous situation, okay? So now we are gonna talk about the actors. So in this business, we have like three groups of companies, three groups with different business mixed in this in the, in the semiconductor industry. We have the EDA developers, the ones which create the software you need to start to design things, okay? So very few companies are devoted to this and they collaborate very close to the foundries. So they, they, they need to work with the foundries because the foundries give them the data they need to create the software in order to design everything, okay? So the foundries here on the right, very few foundries around the world and very few foundries that can build very high-tech chips. So I think this sounds to you, TCMC is the biggest one in the world. Uh, UMC, XFAB, AMS, UMC, there are few foundries in the world and the manufacturing business is located more or less around Asia. Okay, there are few foundries here in, in Europe also and in the States, but uh, most of the of the market is, is in Asia, the, the manufacturing market. And here in the middle we have the, I guess that they are the, the most important companies because they they design the things they do the things okay and here they don't invest a lot of money in uh, in hardware i mean they work with people intellectual intellectual property they design things they uh, sell these things to other people for example many of these companies build ip blocks an ip block is a, a closed design for example a microprocessor a microcontroller something which is doing something inside your system and you, uh, you you buy this thing and you put it in your design and the only thing you have to do is to test it and just uh, oh okay we had some problems with the <coughs> remote connection okay Felipe is the is the yeah yeah, like right? Okay, <laughs> no problem. Okay, so I was telling that these companies uh, really create the building blocks, okay? And this is where the money is. I mean, the biggest income is here because they have more or less very, very few money invested in hardware, very few money invested in facilities. They work with people, with high tech engineers. And uh, many of the names here, I guess there's some, some to you, some to you, for example, Intel and devices, Samsung, all these people, sometimes, sometimes one of these, some of these companies have a small factories, small uh, foundries, but they only use this, these foundries to create the, the highest tech chips or to test them or to build uh, uh, prototypes, okay, the, the, the manufacturing process that the, Big uh, manufacturing processes here in, the, in these old standards. Okay, so more or less these are the actors, and now we are gonna talk about these actors. For example, the design companies. I mean, where the really money is, the big business is here. Uh, they they nowadays they work building whole systems in the chips. So uh, most of the times you find chips that do everything. I mean, you take a, a phone cell, for example, you take all the components there and you see a big chip which is doing more or less everything and then you have some other parts connected but most of the computing power is inside one of the of the elements so they build big systems and these systems are uh, divided in two different parts uh, there is a big very big digital part where you have all the computing power, where you have all the modulating, the modulating thing, you have everything there. Okay, but also you have a small part, more or less like 25% or 20% of the area of the chip is the analog part. But this part, the analog part, is the one that takes most time to design. Okay, because it's the, the one that usually you, you cannot reuse in other places. So this one is custom made for your application and the digital part most of the times is based on IP blocks. So blocks you take from, you buy from other people and you use them in your designs. So it's easier to do this thing, you do this thing faster 
and you, it takes more time to work in the other part. Okay, so that's the idea. So a lot of people working in this part very fast and very few people because it is very difficult to find another designers nowadays working in this part, which takes most of the time to uh, to design and to test. Okay, so in the end you have something very big. Big means one square centimeter, more or less, the, the, big, the bigger one. Okay, so, and everything is running there. What about the manufacturers? In the manufacturers are the companies that build the chips. So they create the chips from silicon, okay? So most of these companies have big inversions, investments in, uh, in, uh, in uh, facilities, big machineries, it takes a lot of money to create one of these uh, foundries. Uh, more or less, the, the biggest foundry in the world uh, is about the, the money the, the money you have there invested in machinery and facilities in this, in this foundry is more or less the money that a small country uh, has available to feed all the people. Okay, so, so this thing is very, takes a lot of money to create one, one of these things. So we have a small foundry here in Europe but the biggest ones are in Asia, and every time you have to change the technology on load, I mean, you have to go deeper and make things smaller, you have to change everything. So the investment there is huge. You have a huge amount of money there. And just, just as an example, you want to create a chip, and the first thing you have to do is to create these things which are called the photo masks. The photo masks are the masks you use to create the photolithographic process in order to uh, print all the uh, circuits inside the, inside the silicon. So in the latest technologies, I'm talking about five nanometers, four nanometers, the set of masks you need to create one AC is about 20 million euros. So each time you build a chip, you have to spend 20 million euros first time to create these masks. These masks. Okay, and you cross fingers and you say, I hope this works because it doesn't work. You have to spend another 20 million euros again. So the investment here is huge. And the companies which work with this uh, earn a lot of money because, because they, they have to put in <coughs> value. I mean, you, they have to, to get money from there. Okay, so what is the inside of a uh, of, uh, silicon chip. What, what can we find in a silicon chip? We, we, we make the difference between two different places we work inside the silicon. I mean, from the silicon to the inside, when you create the uh, transistors, the metal, the metals to go to the connections, everything, we call, uh, we talk about the front end. The front end is everything related to the silicon. So when we talk about front end, we talk about creating the silicon. Okay? Everything else related to the packaging, the testing, the, the development of the of the boards, the PCBs, everything else is called backend. So all the manufacturers, the silicon manufacturers, work mostly on front end, and when they finish the chip, the, the, the chip, they send the chip to other places to test them and packaging and everything else. So that's what we call the backend. And this is the typical uh, cut, the what we call the technology cut of a uh, modern technology. I mean, you can find here, here we have the, the wafer, the silicon wafer, from this point to the down, and here we have all the transistors and everything else. Uh, and then all these layers you can see here are related to the metal connections. So this is where you create the connections for, for going from one place to the other and uh, do all the connections you need there for the, for the transistors. So the process is very complex. You uh, you have to use two or three different masks, the ones I told you before, to create all these layers, every layer. So uh, in the end, this is a complex process, but it's very uh, automatic. I mean, there is no human intervention intervention there. So you put this wafer inside your machinery, and the wafer goes from one place to the other automatically, and everything gets done in the end. Okay. So this is a very automatic process. And the key to make money in this process is to use bigger wafers. Because the bigger the wafer, the most, the, the, the bigger the number of, of uh, chips you get there. 
because in the newest technologies, the yield, what we call the yield in the, in the manufacturing process is very low. So you have to create 100 chips, uh, chips to get, for example, 80 or 70 working chips. Okay, so you lose more or less a one third of the chips because of the manufacturing process uh, problems or uh, issues you have there. Okay, so what's the Moore's law? I guess you have heard this thing a lot. The Moore's law is this a law? Is from Moore where this is not a law and it's not from Moore. Okay, <laughs> the Moore's law is something that people realized in the first years of the, the semiconductor industry in the first years of the manufacturing process, they realized that every two years, more or less, the number of transistors inside the chip were double. Okay, so you had double the devices, and you you can you could in, in increase the complexity of your designs twice every two years, more or less. But that was in the beginning. Now this thing is more or less true, but instead of two years, it takes more or less seven years to do this jump to this change, okay? And now at the level we are we are now, we are talking about four nanometers, two nanometers uh, in, the, in the most uh, advanced processes, is gonna stop sometime. So it's very, we are very close to the end of the silicon. We have theory. said that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, you're right. We have said that so many times that people don't, don't realize that really it's very close because we are talking about two nanometers. I mean, for example, in the latest transistors, you have the, the the isolation from the gate of the transistor is just three or four atoms in the layer. So you cannot go any further. So you cannot put just one atom there because it's not going to work. So three atoms, four atoms is very close to the limit. Okay? We are studying different things and we are working with different devices and different technologies, but up to now there is nothing really working or nothing can, that can be manufactured as a as in huge numbers. Okay, there are tests and there are prototypes, different technologies, but things are more or less <coughs> that way. Okay, so what are we going to do from now on? I guess that the idea is that instead of doing things smaller, we are going to do things more useful. I mean, we are going to produce new functionalities inside the chips. So maybe you have heard about the MEMS, microelectronic mechanisms inside the chips. You know, for example, the uh, accelerometers you have in your mobile phones. When you move your mobile phone, and it detects the movement. So it's made using an, an, an accelerometer. The accelerometer is a special sensor, but it's built inside the silicon. It's, it's based on just a can what we call a cantilever. It's a, it's a layer of, of silicon which is floating in the vacuum. And when you move this thing, you have some inertia, inertia that changes the shape of the silicon. Okay, so you detect this change. So that's a man. We are also working with biochips to analyze samples, for example, blood samples and these things. So many different kinds of sensors, integrated power to deal with uh, power uh, um, uh, uh, power uh, changes or power conversion inside the chips. So things are going more or less the way that you increase the functionality of the of the chip instead of increasing the complexity of the of the chip. Okay. So where is the value? Where do we have the money in this in this microelectronic or semiconductor world? As I told you before, most of the companies devoted to the design are the ones that really have the biggest share in the markets, are the ones earning money. So they make a lot of money because they, they create things with a very big added value. So once you create your design, does not stop there. You can sell it many times to many people and you really uh, you, you make their profits. Okay. So these companies, the design companies, invest a lot in, in RD, RD and have uh, very high qualified engineers working there. But uh, the, the capex, I mean, the investment you have in facilities is very low. So you only have computers and people working there. And that's, uh, that's the idea for the design companies. The manufacturing comp uh, companies also make a lot of money, but they make a lot of money based on a big uh, investment in facilities. 
So they have to change these facilities and to improve these facilities uh, a long time, and that's very uh, money consuming. So they have to spend a lot of money to make some money. But in the end, the added value of these companies is much, much lower than the design ones. Uh, just to show you how these foundries are uh, um, spread around the world and how they work, how, how they work, take a look at this chart. This chart is showing you which is the amount of, of foundries working in different technology nodes. The technology node is more or less the size of the transistor you can build. Okay, so we start from the the early 2000s. Uh, with uh, 130 nanometers, more or less, which was the, one of the, the first uh, technologies used in, in, in today's Intel Pentiums. Okay, so this is the, 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 the start flow of the, the newest technologies. Okay, so this technology is already used in many applications, for example, automotive, uh, sensor, uh, everything you can find at home appliances, all these things are built using this kind of, of technologies. And there is a lot of people working there, many families working, still working with this, with this technology. So once we go down and we scale the transistors and we get lower transistors, there are fewer and fewer and fewer families working with this technology because it's very expensive and you need a lot of money to create the facilities you need. Okay, in the end, the newest technology, which is about seven, nine, uh, seven uh, five nanometers, uh, there are only two manufacturers in the world working with these technologies: PCMC, PSMC, sorry, and Samsung, building memories and, and the and the highest end processors in the world. And and the, the amount of money you need to, to maintain and to create these facilities is unbelievable. Okay, so very very few people are working with these technologies. Most of the of the market share is around here, around 65, 45 nanometers. Okay, well, that's the idea. So global business, global weakness also. So you you might have problems with these supply chains, uh, with these elements going around the world because once you have some problem somewhere, it can really stop the thing. So for example. In the, during the Ukraine war, uh, there has been a shortages of several elements, crew elements in this in this semiconductor industry, mainly palladium and neon. The palladium is used in the connectors, capacitors, and the soldering, or inside the packages of the of the chips. And the neon is used to create the photo photolithographic lasers you need to uh, to use the photo the photo mask I told you before. So uh, these two elements are just one of the thousands of elements we use. But when you have only one or two countries that produce these elements and you get some problem with these countries, you stop the whole thing. And that's the, that's the problem. Because no, nobody, nobody in the world has the whole chain inside one, just one country. Okay? Even in the States, there is nothing that uh, you can really build as a whole just placed in one country. Okay? And that's one of the of the biggest problems of this of this industry. Very easy. Just for you to know, we have here in the local scene in Valencia, we have several of the biggest companies, of the biggest design companies. We don't have any manufacturing process here. Uh, analog devices, Max Linear, and uh, Bosch, Bosch Automotive, and AMS. We have. Uh, these companies here, and they are hiring a lot of engineers all the time. And we are very happy <laughs> because this means that we are doing some some things well. Okay, and uh, that's the that's the point. So now it's your turn. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Vicente, uh, Vicente, for this global view of the business, of the IC uh, business. Let me know more or less your background. Telecom engineering, electronics. Electronics? One, two. This is, this is no worse. Uh, telecom electronics. Telecom? 
Computer science? ICT. Computer science. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the bad things. Uh, have you heard this? Chip crisis, uh, problems with uh, chips and delivery times of cars and everything. And this is the, what I call the perfect storm. So everything is. Oh, Felipe, photo. Everything is in line for a bad situation like at the one that we have. Why? Okay, I'm not uh, working like with, with the design of electronic chips. I'm a user of the chips. I'm also uh, working with electronics, but I use um, digital, digital signal processor, microcontrollers, I also develop the software and the PCBs and the things. So I'm in the back end and up. <laughs> So, let's talk about before this COVID situation about 2020 in March. was a big moment for the industry, the semiconductor industry. Sales were going up, consumer electronics was going up. And how many devices with IC do we consume? Okay, think about yourself. How many devices with chips have you bought this year? Including the last year? Chips. How many things with chips? With, uh, uh, with silicon. Silicon with uh, uh, with integrated circuit. But only this year, or how many? In, in one year. Just think in one year. One person, one year. Anyone has a new phone? <coughs> only one? I don't believe. New computer? New car? New microwave oven? New. <laughs> Uh, nothing? What? You don't buy anything? I don't believe. New thermometer, new, new power plant, so new... Like all the products are like oh, in September. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Think in one year or more or less. What, how many things do we buy normally as humans each year that have internally electronics? So, two or three. Two or three. And one, for example, one telephone has several chips. Several. A car has 20, 40, probably. And also, it's our internal use. Let's think about, uh, for example, uh, electronics for the trains, for the airports. Everything needs electronics. So, we are buying more than 40 billion microprocessors, chips with a brain, yeah. It's several per human. Okay, and this is going up and up and up. The actual cars with the electronic cars and everything, they need hundreds of euros or dollars in electronics. So it's a really big, big, big market with big needs. Everything we use today, most of the things we use today have electronics. And this is what happens. Everything is digital now, the cloud, Okay, do you use uh, Google Drive? You don't care about where is your data, but somewhere is some computer, no? And this data works travels through a network with routers and computers and blah blah blah. So there is a lot, and there is no bad. At that time, we were very happy, selling a lot of chips, everything. Everybody was buying all the things we we wanted, no problems. Big first problem, Renaissance, you know, you don't know these brands. They build a lot of electronics, in, mainly in the car industry. Mm -hmm. Problem with one factory. So problems with the car industry. Also, uh, Japan uh, manufacturer AKM that makes uh, chips for the uh, sensors and the audio market. Have also a fire in one of the factories. That was a disaster, but it was only a small part of the business in the audio business. Is the, the I work in the audio, okay? And that was a pain in the sorry, because everybody was using these converters, and everybody then need to re, uh, redesign all the things. And then we have this strange situation, and what happens? Worldwide lockdown. Do you remember? And money. Is scary. So the companies, hey, hey, what's going on? So stop buying everything. Everybody go home and 
no more orders of electronics or chips, no more forecast. How many chips are you going to sell? Or do you need how many engines, or how many Intel i5 or something? I don't know. Okay, so everybody's stuck. Because money is scary, you know. We did as a individual person. So companies also. So because we didn't know how many times it will take to, to us to recover. Facilities in Taiwan, China stop. Lock down. Lock, close, close the door. Switch off the light. And this is also something that you can switch on and off, on, off now. Okay. Not that easy. So everybody stop, all the companies stop, and then and the companies that use chips for data science stop buying chips. No forecast. Companies that make chips stop buying silicon wafers and, and metals and all, all the all the things they need. So everything stop. We were at home and we need to continue with our lives, more or less. So we started doing uh, working from home, doing education from home. No? Did you do? Did you have uh, uh, classes, uh, teleconferencing classes? No? Yeah. With computers, cameras, uh, infrastructure, uh, uh, online infrastructure. So the demand of computers, cameras, network devices, cloud computing was incredible. <coughs> and we sold everything we had. So you wanted to buy a Logitech camera of 40 euros, you will need to pay 200 euros or more or, do, or nothing. You can't buy. So everything we have in the stock disappeared. What we can do now? Okay, let's see. Let's continue with our lives. No, in 2021, we started moving a little bit. No more lockdown. Everybody was going up. And then the economy started to increase really fast. Huge demand of everything. Of everything. Consumer electronics involved and chips, of course. And now all the companies say, I need chips. But not normal number of chips. I need chips and I want to buy a lot more because I want to be ready. And this is the, what I call the uh, toilet paper effect. So when there are some problems in the economy or some problem with the wars or whatever or lockdown, you buy a lot of toilet paper, no? More than you need. Everybody does that. Or you buy water and cereals, more than you need. But the capacity of manufacturing is fixed because as Vicente has said, it takes a lot of money and a lot of time, five years to have a new facility working. And everybody wants to buy, let's say, 30% more than normal. Me, 30%, you, 30%, you, you. And we don't have the capacity of building this 20% for all. And that is the big problem, total collapse. There is no possibility to build all the chips we want, we have ordered. So this is a queue, no? Okay, my chips, your chips, or Intel, or whatever. And then this guy from that is very low in the queue. Hey, I want my chips. You are in the queue. I have this uh, <laughs> paper with uh, dollars. I pay you more. Mm, twice. Mm, three times. Okay. Yeah. And then people is buying twice three times, four times the typical price of making chips to get higher in the queue. And the companies like this, ESMC or UMC, that the ones that made the silicon are billionaires. They are in record because they are having a lot of money. That's the big problem. Everybody wants chips, but the possibility of building is limited. And everybody is fighting. And also there are geopolitical reasons. Asia is very, very high in importance and 
also there is speculative stocks, is speculation, is speculative. People with money and bad feelings, they buy a lot and they start. Then you wait, the price rises, price rises, price rises, okay. And then they buy, they sell or 10 times the price, 20 times the price. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a car and there is one chip of 20 cents that is needed in the car, and you don't have the 20 cents chip, you will pay 100 euros per, per for the chip, no? Because you need to sell a complete car. And this is what happens. Everybody's paying a lot. You, you also okay. have the, the graphic card effect. The graphics card effect. <laughs> you know, this, the manufacturers get most of the money from the highest end chips. <clears throat> Where are the highest end chips? The graphic cards. So they don't want to create automotive chips. Because automotive chips are very, very, very cheap. I mean, they, they are very un undervalued, but the graphics cards are very high value. So they create gra graphics cards. So they manufacture also what they have more profit. That's it. Okay. So now it's difficult. And this will continue because it's not only the money you need to build manufacturing facilities. In Europe, we want to start in the States, in Asia more. It takes years. Okay, so it's not something that you can make fast. So the price increases. Examples, I, I, I took this, it's one of the designs I participated years ago. This is true, this is a stupid, okay, a low cost 8 bit microcontroller. Okay, it controls the screen, it might, okay, it does a few things, but it's doing its work. It's about two. And a half euros normally. Normal. Normally. Then increases up to as much as you can pay. I know this company has bought this for 20 euros, thousands of them. This is an amplifier of audio amplifiers. This is from is company is called Pascal, really, really, really big one in the audio business. You don't know. Did you know GBL, this company of audio? GBL, they, they use it in one of the speakers. This amplifier also has chips, also has some MOSFETs here in the in the power supply. No more, no more now, okay. When? I don't know. This happened. Delivery times of chips was about 16 weeks. It's good, I think it's, now it's perfect. Then they start moving 20 weeks, 40 weeks. And now you can see 72 weeks, 90 weeks, or you have no answer. When, when I will have my chips? I don't know. Because they do not know what to put in the queue. The queue is. Okay? So they don't have answer. I told last week about with another devices, I want to use one of the new DSPs for a design. And the people from the company said to me, forget. Don't use this chip because I don't know when I'm going to manufacture. Because I have orders from others that I have more, more, more incomes and more needs. So this is what is happening now. Chips that was about one euro, now we pay 100, 100. And also you can buy. Let me make this. Uh, oh, this is a, it's a, a web that looks for electronic components. And it looks in different uh, web, okay, online web services. For example, this is a, you know this one? STM32, anyone knows? It's a microcontroller from ST, it's a, a Cortex from ARM. It's very, very, it, they have 50% of the microcontroller market in the world now, okay? And there are plenty of them. Look, forget about the price. It doesn't matter. Stop, zero. Zero, zero, zero. Okay? More distributors. 
Okay, oh, 5,000, I want to buy all of them. No, why not? If I use this chip, but look, this is like a star, that means it's a something you can trust. A good company that sells chips every day. And these ones, uh -oh, the star is empty. So it's not physical distribution. This is what we call the gray market. Hey, everybody! People from the mass area. No, Peter. Yes, yes. Huh? Do you know who was speaking? William, because he joined us and probably he forget to uh, mute the micro microphone. Okay. 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 I, I, I hear voices in my head. <laughs> so look, this is one extreme example. Okay, it's a chip that normally takes less than ten dollars. Okay, it's a thirty-two bit microcontroller with plenty of flash memory, with floating point capabilities. Really, 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 really wide use. And the typical price was about this ten, ten dollars from something like that. And these ones that are the gray market, look the prices. But don't trust that they have these 5,000 chips. Because normally, sometimes they put these chips in, 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 in they put these chips in shell, in shell, but they don't have. So, you set the money and cross everything you have to cross, because sometimes then they say, oh, the price is three times more, or I don't have a thousand, I only have a uh, hundred. So be careful with this. And also, I know people that has bought chips in this green market. I try and I have very bad experiences with that. Sometimes I, I have some reference green market suppliers that has helped me a lot. I pay a lot for them. And now also what is happening is Uh, what is happening also is that the chips that are manufactured and they do not work, about 20%, 30%, this is typical, instead of taking them to the trash, someone is stolen and is selling in the market, in the gray market. And then you buy chips, okay, you have, you have the reference, it's the same chip, and then you make everything, you solder, and it doesn't work. So be careful. This happens, and this is already a nightmare. So silicon prices is increasing, not artificially high because people is paying more just to get a higher position in you. And also, you know this. This was about the price you need to pay from uh, taking a container, a ship from China to Europe. Now. You can pay 50, 20, 25 thousand dollars. Offer the money. Offer, offer. So, more problems. Second, third, a wave of COVID. You know, in China, lockdown of different uh, uh, parts of China. Do you know this? Have you seen this? This is. The port of Shanghai. Have you been in Shanghai? Very beautiful city. No, beautiful. Nice city. Okay. Lockdown. Lockdown means nobody is working. And a lot of the containers, a lot of the materials of the world are shipped from Shanghai port. Each of these things is one ship waiting they turn to take the, the, the containers. This was one week, one or two weeks ago. 
So now even we have problems of queue uh, in, in, the, in the ships to take all the containers that have chips, have uh, mater materials, metals, and so on. So, so 2023 is a bad year, I'm sure, for electronics. It's a bad year because you can put orders and you have dates for 2024. What do what what do you do, like a designer? <coughs> it will take time to solve this. I don't know. I do not know how 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 much, but next year will be difficult. So it will be normal that. You need to wait weeks for one computer or months for a car. Normally, today a car, okay, buy this. This is the one I have. Buy this one. I want the other with bigger motor and more things. Okay, one year. Yeah. One year or more. Okay, so this will continue. Now, as a designer, what I do, or I talk with companies that they design what I recommend. Do the opposite way. Instead of designing things with this chip, I know this switch for Ethernet, blah, 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 this converter. OK, I can work or I can live with this brand, this model, this, 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 this. Please tell me which ones can you buy. And then once you have all the chips here, I can touch them. I have the chips that I can touch. I will design with these chips. Because I reassure myself that I can manufacture this. So now the people is doing this kind of thing. They, you buy, but also you buy not normal. You buy for the next two years. So the problem is even, is even bigger. It will take time. So everybody, please, cross fingers. Okay. So let's say this will be solved in probably by an economical crisis. <laughs> okay. So people will have less money to buy things and there will be less need to buy things, less need to produce things, and everything will go. But I'm not an expert in these things. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. We have to get used to this situation because it's going to be the usual thing in 10 years. So now, for example, in Spain, we have more second-hand cars sold than first-hand uh, cars. Yeah, because there is no enough personal uh, gas. So we mentally prepare for waiting for my new NVIDIA. Okay, do you play games? No? So which, which uh, card do you have? The next computer you're going to buy. NVIDIA. NVIDIA is making billions. Yes. In, and NVIDIA manufactures no chip. No, no one. This competition. And NVIDIA says, hey, this, this TSMC, I want to buy you this capability of wafer manufacturing. But I have a lot of money. <clears throat> Put me high in the queue. This is real economy. We like or we don't like, but this is what happens actually. So, met so many companies are doing the same. The biggest ones are doing that. I mean, at Apple is doing the same thing. It's buying all the facilities. Is saying close the facility for me. Yeah. <laughs> and we pay you this four times the money. The, this pound is offer mine. and demand. No. Okay. Yeah. This is a cap capitalist capitalism. Cap yeah. Yeah. Capitalism. Capitalism. And then I said to the street. Yeah. That's that's it. So, so the next computer you're gonna buy is gonna be twice twice the money you pay for the lower one, and it's gonna be more or less the same. <laughs> So may they last longer because things are not going up. You, know? you can wait. Uh, wait. Yeah, wait. Wait for it because the power, the power, the computer power is not increasing. I mean, in the last, the, the latest Nvidia cards are more or less the same as the last generation. More or less the same. A little bit more because they have to sell, but they are more or less the same. So why are they spending that money? And that, because everything must be keep running. Keep you running want to the, have the the last, the dream factor that I want to have, the new RTX 30 something. That's it. So, so more or less, this is the idea that Vicente and I had about this wider view of the 
electronics, what's involved, and why we have this crisis in, in the world about COVID and about chips. Yeah. Any questions? Questions? No? Do you have chips to sell? <laughs> <laughs> I know big companies that instead of building their own designs, they say, whoa, I can buy a new car with these chips. Okay, and they prefer selling the chips instead of building their own products. Okay, if you go to Alibaba, you can buy the chips. You see the photo. I have uh, this chip I want to sell, 100 euros, dollars, or whatever. Be careful, because they have the photo, doesn't mean they have the chip. Okay, so cross fingers and wait, and let's say I believe in two years. Next year will be very bad. Uh, people that work in companies that make electronics, they want they want to cry all the day because one day you have a problem with this microcontroller that costs two dollars. I need to pay 70, 20 euros. <coughs> okay, let's go. Next day, oh, I have a problem with the converter. No more. Texas says that it will take 52 years. Uh, sorry, weeks. So buy and then what, when it, once you have the chips, I will redesign. So I don't want to redesign and redesign and redesign. I made this three times. Three times, changing parts. Oh, no more converters of this. Okay, I will do. I will use another from Texas instrument. No more from Texas. Yeah. Let me. <laughs> so buy thousands of converters and then once you have, I will do this. And the third version has chips that we, the company, has. Has means that they can touch. Okay. So, Felipe, is so so? They don't have answers? <laughs> Question. No, but, so, I understand the problem is huge. So, no chips. This one For several chips. products, no chips. You as an engineer, how, how will you see like, uh, if the situation goes on and on? Will like the market balance itself somehow, like alternative solutions? And I think do you see, I, I'm not an engineer, I'm just a business IT guy, so I don't know. Yeah, really I'm pretty really into good. chips and the audio electronics and everything like that. I, I heard, I'm working as a DJ, I, I already know that I can buy anything, not even like headphones. And so, so, yeah, that's that's delayed. So, I have to like wait two years for you to do Yeah, this, this, but, is, uh, this is what's happening now. But is there any other solution or we just wait and we just... Okay, okay what, what happens is that, uh, for example, you need a DJ set. Yes. The one which is uh, uh, Pioneer. Pioneer. Yeah, all that. Okay. 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 So Pioneer doesn't have, but let's say brand B, Factor, or other brand have. Everybody buys the other ones and they disappear from the market. So everybody is buying what they can. Yeah, but they are also sold out. They don't yeah. also sold out. For example, out. I, I, want, I wanted to buy the new audio interface from Yamaha. Very professional. You can put the uh, BSD plugins. They have audio for Ethernet. Okay. So I went to Thoma. It's the biggest uh, uh, seller in Europe. Uh, okay, price is high, but I want, I want to. Okay. Available in the next months. So what will happen? Small companies will die. This is the problem. Will die. This is the problem. Is it possible that, for example, like cheap recycling will oh will be like a thing? No, no. I made I recycle tips for building prototypes for yeah. the third person of this all, all the time. And I know people. I, I was in the international uh, trade show of the audiovisual business in Europe, in Barcelona, that week. And I was talking with people about these things. And I remember uh, one company that told me that other company, I don't remember the name, was buying complete washing machines. Yeah, washing, 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 machine. washing machines, the complete washing oh, machines, appliances. just to cheap, cheap they need for their products. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, like, as far as I know, like, common audio interfaces uh, use 
like roughly this same ATM converters and they are like ATM is the company and they are like old converters so for example in a new uh, I always look at the BCD how it's designed when I buy like a new interface because I do like uh, amateur studio stuff also and the, the converters are like old chips so yeah. Yeah, that's why I asked the recycling because if I don't have like chips, it's, yeah, it's not also, also recycling. For example, the, 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 the conversions I was talking about uh, that the company bought thousands, yeah. they are I think 15 years old. Mm -hmm. But and they, a Texas instrument, have this in, in, in they can sell because these are all technology mm -hmm. and the, the, the manufacturers have this capability. Yeah. The founders don't want to build them because they are old and they don't get money from them. But the designs are extremely good. I mean, you don't you don't need to go further if you get one thing working. In a wheel, for example, has no 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 meaning at all to go down to no. 40 nanometers. Should be no sense. And but but don't don't feel down. I mean, <coughs> uh, oh, I there, is, <laughs> there is a lot of money running up. I mean, in the design companies, in the semiconductor design companies, there is a lot of money. They are doubling the capacities all the times. So, I mean, for example, this year, Max Linear hired twice the number of engineers that last one. They are they are growing a lot. And what does it mean? It means that the, the money is there, it's up there. So, sometimes it's going to going to flow down and it's going to create a balance in the situation, sometimes. I don't know when, but and the salaries of engineers rising a lot. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So no. engineers now are like football soccer stars. That's yeah. good. <laughs> so, so now you and business people also. Great, okay. like for Intel and other companies to build their like uh, facilities to yeah. build more. Intel, yeah, Intel they now they is already doing. Intel, <coughs> already doing that. Intel, for example, had problems. In the very low, low, low size transistors, and they invest mm -hmm. billions, they, and they need to move to TSMC. Let's say they are a bit late to the seven yeah. nanometer part. <laughs> okay, but also be careful so, with the nanometer because it's, yeah. it's also marketing. Because yeah, the, yeah, the nanometers yeah. from Intel are not the same nanometers from TSMC. No. Yeah, yeah. So, so the so seven is similar to the five. Images and well, I don't understand the technical background because I'm a joint business start oh, study. Oh, yeah. But oh, how come yeah. there are no chips and Apple, <coughs> Apple made it like the market with the M1 chips, which are presented to be very good and actually they are. So, so how come that they did this? Because Apple bought a lot of wafer capa capacity to TSMC. Yeah. Time ago. So usually, a lot. Okay. A lot. Okay. usually this thing goes in wafers. So when you go to a foundry and you say, I want 28 wafers, and, and the whole foundry production is 2000. So 20 to 2000 is nothing. Okay. But Apple comes there and says, Okay, give me 3000. <laughs> and you buy the whole foundry and you block all the production of the foundry for you. Okay. That's, that's the idea. Because it scared me a bit whether to buy new one or just wait for one or two years. Or yeah. Okay, so it's a responsibility with our client. Oh, yeah. It works? Yeah. Keep it working. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can sell it and buy that. Uh, the next year will be different. So there will be computers to buy, yes, phones to buy, yes. Yeah. But not all the ones that we want or the models that we want. Also, for gas. You can wait for a car, it will take one year or two to recover. If you want a specific model, now you need to wait more than one year. Mm -hmm. So, okay, one more. I think we are out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Time, so one, more. one more. Because you said uh, so the, the chip become more and more efficient, uh, powerful, and etc. But uh, when, so during the production, there is some loss, you said? Like 20% of the yeah. and uh, for, for us, uh, if now we decide to produce the, the version that uh, for a uh, simple version, there will be less loss because the technology. Oh, okay, 10 hours. Uh, this, is, this is the wafer. Yeah. 
So do you split in how many fields you can put? Yeah, as many as you can. As many? And normally it's, a pro it's, it's a related with the production of the chip. So sometimes yeah. you have small, small deep mistakes, small, small mistakes. failures in the in the production. So you get more or less 20 in the old technologies is just five percent. Two percent. Chips are bigger. In the newest technologies, you get a, a very low yield. So you get only 80, 70 percent yield. So it didn't, it didn't uh, depends on the on the uh, on the version, yeah. complexity of the yeah, in the complexity of the chip. As the transistors are smaller, you can afford uh, a small detail, a small detail. Ah. What companies do is they make chips with. Uh, reconfigurable parts so they are able to see okay this part of the memory is not working i internally review to another part of the memory so they put more silicon than they need trying to reuse the chips what they do also uh, for example if you buy uh intel i7 there are a lot of models different size of the cache memory as memory different uh, speed of the clock they are the same sometimes. So they test more memory, less memory. Okay, once they, they test this part, so depending on how much memory is working, the highest frequency they can test the chip working. So they are, they then uh, classify. So you buy, they manufacture the same silicon for all, and then depending on the test, they sell with one model or others. Because my question was, uh, if there is a way that the, the market be regulated, but by decreasing in terms of technology, instead of always trying to be better and better, but just trying to lower the technology and... Yeah, but probably, but not now. I mean, now they are making money and they want to make money and they are yeah. taking this thing as, as Herman said. Um, um, but, but in the future, maybe there's a balance regulation, internal regulation, where you get simpler chips with all the technologies that do what they you need them to do and they are cheaper <laughs> so in the end i think we will get there but not now in a few years good thing that's it yeah well,